We're going to take a look today at the Crucible WDS, which is an open source project that we use here at our office. Uh, we use it for deploying Windows machines mostly, but it will deploy Mac and Linux boxes. I actually haven't tested on either of those. Uh, generally, we use it at a store when customers bring them in, they need to be reloaded. It's a really simple and easy way for us to reload Windows on a system. I'll uh, read the description here real quick. Crucible WDS is a free open source solution for the cloning and imaging. Most closely resembles Semantic Ghost, Solution Suite, or Cronus Snap Deploy. It supports Windows, Windows Vista. It supports all the versions of Windows in short here. Uh, it supports MBR, GPT, Legacy BIOS and EFI, full LVM support, and all the different popular file systems, NTFS, FAT, Extent 2. Uh, we've used this to clone Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 7, and yes, it will do Windows XP if you really want it to. Uh, we do have it set up for uh, PXE boot. It does support USB and ISO if you don't want to do that. Uh, really nice automated imaging system. Uh, first off, we installed it in FreeNAS because that's the fastest RAID server box we have here right now, and it does install as a plugin right inside there. So it lists in available plugins. You can run through the install process. Uh, they have great documentations. It creates a jail for it in FreeBSD to keep it separate from all the other running processes. Runs really fast in there. Uh, after that, you just set up a few shares under NFS for the Crucible. It's for the images and the image store. And once that's all configured, you're up and running. So let's take a look at what the firewall settings are to get it set up for a PXE boot. First TFTP server has to be set up, which in this case is the IP address of our free or FreeNAS box. Uh, enter the IP address and the file we're looking for, and this one happens to be PXE Linux 0. It's the only settings we had to put under our DHCP server here uh, to get it up and running. Once it's up and running, it's got a really slick web interface. It's really nice, well written. You can use this to deploy multiple systems at once. Uh, you can queue it up to do multicasting. So if you have 20 of the same computers, you want to image all 20 at the same time, it does have that support. Um, it lists your images lets you view them and if you needed to change the name view an image history of one this was uploaded or deployed real simple interface to use you can uh, create a new image from here or we usually just do the images from the interface itself i'll show you real quick how that works i got a uh, virtual box set up here with the pxc boot this is just a blank virtual box and here's the menu. It's real simple. You can add a host. Now, we're not using the host feature. You can actually specify so each computer is listed in here. I, we don't really see as necessary. There's too many different computers that come in. So we just use the on demand, which is really handy. Uh, the host setup is like for let's say you have a lab or a school where you wanted to easily redeploy to all the same systems. You'd register them all with there, and then you could tie images to each of those hosts. I'm not going to get into all that. They got some documentation on how that works. Just wanted to show you the system in action. So we're going to choose on demand. So a lot of computers come in, we just simply run through this as a setup option when we have to reload them. It does ask for a username and password, which is easy enough to set up in the user's menu. And we want to either deploy or upload. Now when we build the images using sysprep, we just upload them here from a virtual machine. We're just going to do a deploy, because this is blank, and uh, then we can pick the version. Uh, number option number eight is the in Windows 7 Home Pro image we built on 319. Just hit that, press enter because I don't want to register this machine, so press enter leaves it blank. You can see how fast this loads. <clears throat> Finds the drives. Starts the image download. And it's setting up all the partitions based on how this Windows 7 there, how the Windows 7 has the first utility partition on there. And you can see, it takes a second here to get going, and I'm going to have this machine completely loaded in less than eight minutes. It kind of depends on the speed of the machine. Uh, this goes faster if they have SSDs because our RAID box is actually able to push this faster than most of your uh, spinning hard drives. So I'm going to cut this out so you don't have to sit here for seven minutes. Okay, we're coming down to the final seconds, and it's going to automatically uh, reboot with the image deployed.
then it doesn't expand because you start from a smaller hard drive. Uh, we usually build these on like 120 gig partitions and then from there they'll expand out to whatever size is uh, necessary. Rarely are you installing 120 gig hard drives in people's computers. Most of them now, you know, terabyte, 500 gigs. Then it reboots. Now I'm just gonna tell it to boot to the local machine. Don't want to wait four seconds. And you're loaded. Windows is gonna start up, run through the hardware detection and deployed. Uh, that's the quick overview of the uh, Crucible WDS system. It's, it really is that simple. Uh, not hard to set up. Like I said, they got great documentation. Um, I'm going to be building some virtual machines with this in here pretty soon and I'll make them available for download. If anyone wants to email me, I'll shoot them over to you. Uh, thank you very much.